Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ayoko Fushala. I hope you guys are doing okay. I hope you guys are doing fine. How did your day go? Are you well? So um, today we're going to be doing chapter 17. Yesterday we did chapter, we did chapter 16 and you know, chapter 16 basically talks about, um, you know, how they should rejoice in the presence of the Lord in a place where the Lord, the Lord has picked um, and how they shouldn't eat certain food when they, when that period um, occurs. Um, and it talks about, you know, the Passover and all the different, you know, feasts that they would usually have. Um, and this actually includes like, you know, the man servant, the strangers and everything like that. And we talked about, you know, how, you know, um, that kind of relates to us in the 21st century and like how some of us, like we're old in events and like, we don't necessarily think to the fact that, well, the presence of God, of the Lord is going to be there and we end up doing, you know, idolatrous acts in the process. So, and I said that it was really important that we should reflect on you know, the fact that God is going to be present and our actions should conform to accommodating God being in our midst, right? Um, and then, you know, um, and it talks further about like, you know, how um, judges um, would be picked amongst us, well, in the Old Testament, right? Amongst the Israelites, right? And how, you know, they like people are going to be judged during the even the even during the festive periods people are going to be judged and um and yeah like no one should receive gifts or um respect persons because you know one could be easily blinded um or perverted um and it says here that you know we should not worship other gods um pretty much like you know don't worship any don't set up any image or plant any um groove you know, of any trees near the altar of the Lord, which is like 21 that I'm just kind of like going over. Um, so pretty much like was what we talked about. If my energy is like a bit like low today, it's just like today was a pretty long day. So like you guys are gonna pardon me on that. So we're gonna pray now. Heavenly Father, glorify your name, O God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace, O God, for your for your might, for your awesomeness. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've bestowed upon us, O God. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you have given us every reason to rejoice. The fact that we're alive, we're here, we're breathing. Father, we say thank you. Father, we thank you, O God, that even though the enemy is trying to give us reasons to cry, we will not cry. We will surely rejoice. We will rejoice in your presence and exalt you, O God, because even amidst all the negativity that's going on in the world, we have something to write home about. We have you and you are everything that we could ever possibly need. And Father, we exalt you. We honor you. We give you all the glory, O oh God. Be thou exalted, Father. Father, we put this Bible study into your hands, O oh God. And I pray, O oh Lord, that whatever questions that is in the hearts of these people, I pray that you answer in the name of Jesus. Father, through this Bible study today, O oh Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, minds will be renewed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever strongholds are in the minds of people that is making them have an unbelief. Father, I break it now with your word in the name of the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for as we, as we commune together and fellowship together in the name of the Lord Jesus, their faith is increased in the name of Jesus. They're encouraged to continually follow, your, follow you and to obey your commandments in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, I honor you, oh God, because you are you are Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the one that can never fail. But I glorify you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Be thou exalted, O God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Okay, so, oh, so basically, um, yeah, um, we are going to begin chapter 17. I'm going to drink water first. All right. Okay. Awesome. So chapter 17 says, thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favor favoredness um, that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. 
um, if there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman that has wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God, in transgressing his commandment, and hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, and it shall be told thee that thou hast heard of it, and inquire diligently, and behold, it be true. And the thing certain that such abomination is wrought in Israel. And I remember one time when we were going through, I think it was like the early chapters, and we went, when the Lord was saying, I do not let anything, um, abo don't let any abomination be in your house. And I basically said that that obviously is related to human being too. So be careful. And I said, be careful you let into your house, into your apartment, because some people carry diverse spirits, you know, around you know, all about, it does not mean that you should bring them into your present, your, your, your house, because your, your own house is sacred. Like this is where God literally comes and he communes with you, fellowships with you, he's with you. This is your, your, your tabernacle. Okay. It says, if there be found any person that worships idol, you worship the sun or the moon, and then he goes and comes into your gate. Right. He said, it be told and, and it be told thee, and you've heard it and someone told you and you heard it and, and inquire diligently and build it be true. And that the, and the thing certain that such abomination, you know, if you're going to actually verify, you verify and you found out that, wow, like, um, you know, Sally, Sally is actually, you know, into, you know, the new age practice or Sally is a witch or Sally practices witchcraft or Sally worships the God, um, the sun, you know, if you find out all of these things, then shall thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gate, even that man or that woman, and shall stone him with stones, okay, till they die, okay? This is something that we can do. And you're saying like, well, okay, well, how can we possibly, you know that person that, you know, does witchcraft, perhaps, you know, in, our, in your neighborhood, um, or in your building or something like that. And then you really know, but then you're, you're praying about it and all of those things. Yes, that's a good step. Pray about it. Pray about it, but don't go about it. like, <laughs> like, don't do that. Like, you know, pray about it. And I'm talking about like warfare prayers, spiritual warfare prayers. Okay. Because like these people, they've come to kill, steal and destroy. These are agents of the devil. You see, you, you stone them. You stone them. These are warfare prayers that you pray and you use the word of the Lord to, to say, you said, God, you have said that we should, what is that again? You have said that, you know, um, whatever man, wicked man or wicked woman worship, worshiping any idol that is in our gates, within our gates, that we should stone them, you know, um, till they die. Father, I stone my enemies. I stone these witches with, with stones in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they, I command them to die. That's a way to pray. That's a way to pray, praying according to the word. And it says here, verse six, at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. You see, at the mouth, okay, of two witnesses or two, you know, two to two, two or three, you know, shall tell um, the person be put to death. Okay, it says, but at the mouth of one witness shall, um, he shall not be put to death. Okay, this is the, this is the, the law of Moses. This is the law of Moses. Okay. It says the hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterward, the hands of all the people so that, so thou shalt put the evil away from among you. Hmm? Sometimes it takes, it takes, you know, more than, you know, um, one person to bring down a coven. You know, sometimes it takes, you know, prayer warriors together and you make things happen right? It says, um, the hands of the witness. Okay. I think we've gone through this. And it says in verse eight, um, if there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, between plea and plea and between stroke and stroke being matters of controversy, um, within thy gates, a uh, matter of controversy was the time where the topic where we're saying like Jesus, um, Lord and God, and then, you know, comments and conversations regarding that, that was a controversial conversation, right? And we clarified it. And it says, then shall thou arise and get thee up into the place, which the Lord thy God shall choose. 
Okay, if there was this, if there's a matter that you're trying to resolve in judgment, then now, you know, go into that and you cannot actually resolve it. Now is the time that you should go into, you know, the place in which the Lord has chosen. And it says, and thou shalt come unto the priest and I'm the priest, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days and inquire that they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. So then you're going to go to the place which the Lord has chosen. And then you're going to go in, um, onto the priest, the Levites, which the Levites are usually always there because like, it's like your church, like literally it's like your church. Do you understand? Whatever God has chosen is literally like your church. Do you understand? Um, what God has chosen, the land he has chosen, you build the tabernacle, that this is where they come to sacrifice and eat in the presence of the Lord, right? So the Levites are usually there because like they're basically the Lord's and the Lord's theirs and, you know, they have intimacy with God. So you go um, and then you inquire and you see um, in verse 10, it says, and thou shalt do according to the sentence which they um, of that place, which the Lord shall choose, shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. Because I feel like this is really interesting. Don't you think it's interesting? Like, wow, like two people are having a, 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 you know, a conflict and they can just easily just go to the church and then, you know, they would, and basically like do you know perhaps like some prayers regarding it and god will speak to the levites and the levites will basically like disclose what god is saying to them and it, i feel like it reminds me of like the i don't know if you know about you know anything about nigerian culture or like the traditions but there's something called the ifa um tradition where like you know you do the oracle and then you throw some like um stuff on the floor and then you, they show you certain things the gods show you certain things Wow. And then you're able to kind of see like what's, you know, about the situation and judgment of the gods. And, you know, this just reminds us that the devil is a counterfeit. Like the devil copies everything God, you know, does. So this is something that, you know, it's happening in the Old Testament. This is what God, you know, does. Right. And it says here, it says, according to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgments which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do, and thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right, nor to the left. And it says, and the man that will do presumptuously and will not akin unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God or unto the judge, even that man shall die. And thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. Because this, you see, because this priest, they're not standing like by their own authority. They're standing by the authority of the Lord. Okay. So pretty much like if they've given you the, 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 any one of the children of um Israel, the judgments, then it's, they have, they're obligated because they, they took their two legs. Okay. To walk into the tabernacle for God to speak. And when God speak, that's a commandment. It's not like a, maybe, um, I don't know, should I do it? That's a commandment. You've involved God now. So now you are under the authority of God and now you have to obey. Okay. So and now I feel like you're asking a question, like, did that actually bring, like, isn't that what brought about the control of the church or the, the, the power of the church? Remember that time when the church used to have like so much power over the people and all of those things that happened then. Um, I feel like that's another conversation for another day or something, a conversation that is what just pondering about and how like the church actually got, you know, corrupted right and we see this in the case of the residential school um you know in canada and how that really messed up a lot of um or oh, the indigenous population in canada i would say some of them but a lot of them right um so just i'm um, so to say that there is nothing that cannot be um corruptible or corrupted right? <laughs> There's nothing that cannot be corrupted. It takes the grace of the Lord. And honestly, it takes humility. Like, if you can be humble and know that honestly, like I'm just a human being. And like, it's literally God that's taking me through every single day, no matter how much glory, no matter how much fame, no matter how much influence that you have, just being humble, knowing that, you know, anything can happen right now, but I don't have the capacity nor the power to pull anything through without my God. Like I need my God. Like I need him to speak so that I can act. And when he says something, I will do. So, and I feel like it goes like same way, like the, the 
children of Israel coming to for help. And then the priests do, they're obligated to like literally say whatever God is saying, not something else, right? Once you start misusing that authority, that influence that you have been the voice of the Lord, then that is something that could be disastrous. Okay. <clears throat> so I feel like this one is from a perspective of like, you know, the people, but then what about from the people in power though, right? Um, so like, uh, yeah, let's, uh, where did we stop? Um, the verse 14. Yeah, in actually verse 13, and it says, all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. So you're not going to do anything because you're thinking, um, you know, you know, when you're thinking like, should I fast? Should I not fast? And you're not sure. And you just go ahead and do it anyways. Not no direction, nothing. And you just go and do it. Yeah, that's that's presumptuous spirituality right there. Okay. That's presumptuous spirituality. And it says, when thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee and shall possess it and shall know and shall dwell therein and shall say, I will let I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Okay. Um, I feel like when I read this, I usually would just always think like, well, this kind of reminds me of like a young lady like myself. You know, you're you're single, you know, you're single pringle, and generally like like you're free you know and I feel like um a lot of this marriage struggles are usually not like out there in the media like except like you look for it but you know um you're like well I want I, I want my future husband was like <laughs> like just like the people around you you know that's that because your husband essentially is your king right so it's like it's like giving me that vibe I just want I, I don't even know why I said that I'm just like yeah, it's just giving me that vibe. And it says, when thou hast come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee and shall possess it and shall, and shall dwell therein, like, you know, you're comfortable and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Like God is the one that's gonna, you see later? Okay, he's such a single ladies, single pringle ladies. This is what God is saying. God is saying that that you, know, you want husband, you want husband, you want husband. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. But God has to be the one to choose. Okay, God has to be the one to choose. Um, I've I've heard um somebody. I think it was Thomas Gary. Um, it it wasn't exactly in his book Sacred Marriage. Um, but it was basically in one of the. In, on his website, somebody had, had, had asked the question because our marriage was pretty much like not great. And then she said, I experienced about how she thought the, the man that she was going to marry was the one because she felt led. Um, And then he goes on to tell her like, you know, well, you know, sometimes that's why it's great. You know, it says that's why it's great that, you know, you should basically, you know, choose your own future husband by yourself and you know when you make the decision at least you're going to be like if anything happens like you'd be like hmm, at least I made the decision by myself like I can now face the music but it's like if you leave everything to God and just leave everything to circumstance like then if anything happens then you're going to be like wow like I saw this I saw that I saw that but I did not do anything about that oh my goodness but I'm like I'm, when I read that I'm like I really strongly think that, you know, it's really important as young ladies that we should like, let God choose for us. Like, let God choose for you. Let God choose for you. And one thing I know is that even if God has sent someone and is like, huh, that person is good for that girl. And that person comes into the picture. It is possible for that person not to, you know, leave the, the, uh, to, to actually, um, live up to the expectation of God, like man, they have the potential to like, you know, fumble, you know, they have the potential to fumble or disobey God and all of those things. So when that happens and the girl was like, oh my goodness, like I thought, like I thought, I thought, I thought, but then some people see that they don't hear when God is saying, Hey, I've changed my mind <laughs> because God can change his mind. Oh. Like God almost changed his mind when he wanted to like, um, 
you know, when it started to destroy the children of Israel in, in when when they were worshiping the golden calf, when Moses went up to the the mountain to get the twelve commandments, like it was like this. This is a wrap. He wanted to do that. I was like, this is a wrap. That was God literally wanting to change his mind. And Moses was begging him. You see, God didn't change his mind, okay? And what, you're not listening because you're so like engrossed with the guy. You're like, oh, this guy, like it's the one. But then you're not really listening. You're supposed to stay plucked with God, but you're not plucked with him, right? You're just living out the experience and being carried away by everything. And that's why I feel like it's really important that even though God is leading you, like you still have to kind of like, have some level of control over the situation because there's something called self-control. You have to control what you think. Like, what are you thinking in your head? Okay. Are you just thinking about the same thing? Or, and like being super obsessed about him. Like that is like something, like you don't even know this guy. Like you don't know him like that. You don't know him. Uh... <laughs> okay. All right. So, and he says, yeah, he says, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. I don't care how like answer me is. Don't set him as king over you. We said, whom the Lord, like, whom the Lord thy God shall choose one from thy, from one from among thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. Oh, hello, hello, <laughs> hello. Not some um guy that's like an unbeliever. I don't bring, don't, don't, let's not even talk about that today. Listen, I don't even know where the sentence is coming from, but like, let's not talk about that today. Not someone that's an unbeliever. It says someone that's going to be, you know, like your brethren. And you know what? Some people are, um, they, they say they are believers, but really they are unbelievers. They're unbelievers. Okay. They're doing, they're serving God. But if you have a conversation with them and then you hear their perspective, you, know, ah, you don't really believe in God, do you? You're just, <laughs> You have just come to seek refuge, but you don't believe. You see, and it says here, it's supposed to be a brethren. It says, thou mayest not set a stranger, not somebody that was some, you see, not some stranger, which is not thy brother. Okay. It might just be, your husband might just be that brother in church. Okay. Your husband might just be that brother at the conference that you went to. Your husband might be, where can you meet guys? Not the bar. <laughs> Not the bar. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Okay. So like, and I feel like in regards to like other things, like men too, like, you know, your wife, but this is about King. This is obviously like about us. Okay. Like, all right, we're always going to keep going. Um, <laughs> okay, so, and it says here, like, you know, um, but he shall not multiply horses to himself. When I read this Deuteronomy, I'm like, huh, that's it, you know? Like, he shall not multiply horses to himself. This guy should not be after material things. Because honestly, let's be honest, money is energy. I feel like if you understand, if you study money, if you do finances and you study money and you're really into like economics and stuff like that, you know, like you understand that money is literally energy. Like it's like a bunch of people just exchanging. It's paper. Like it's just exchanging like energy literally by, by forming brotherhoods and like, you know, cliques, you know, and then just sharing it, and which is what God said. That's his vision. He said that he wants everyone to be blessed. And when someone, a poor person comes, we should give. That is literally what he wants us to do. And this thing is just energy. Like it, what did it, what is paper guys? It's just the intense, like just give and give and give past the energy. Um, so like, um, where were we? He says, he shall not multiply horses themselves. Like, why are you having more than two or um cars? Like you don't need that much cars. He said, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. This man must not be the one that you be fornicating with or you be kissing before marriage. Okay, like we're doing nonsensical nonsense. Okay, that's not the English word, but this man is not the one that was gonna be telling you, oh baby girl, just a kiss, it's just a peck, it's not gonna hurt, it's not gonna hurt, it's not gonna hurt you. Not that type of vibe. If that type of vibe is vibe is occurring, then that's the sign to run. This one is the one that'll be like, Can we go to do Bible study together, darling? Well, not darling at this stage though. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. It's one that's going to be like, um, did you pray today? Um, okay. Well, did you study your Bible? So how's your spiritual health? Like, did you tell God about that situation you were dealing with the other day? Like, that's the type of vibe that you're looking for. Not someone that's going to be like, oh, I just feel so like lonely. Can you come over? No, uh, this man should not be the one to take you to back to Egypt. To the end that he may, that he should multiply horses, not the one that will take you back to Egypt just because he wants to multiply horses. Oh, I see. I love the word of the Lord. You see, women, we have the capacity to do amazing things. Okay. Even I surprise myself sometimes. You see, women, we have the capacity to do amazing things. Imagine, let's not even go there. Let's not even go there. And you don't even know where we're going, but let's not go there, okay? You see, he said that, let me, let me say it again. He said, but he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses for as much as the Lord has said unto you. And I, I've told you this. It says, ye shall hence not, henceforth return no more that way. I've told you money is just an energy. It's like you bring too many people together and then you start exchanging energy and people give different types of energy, what they have and it's just vibes, you know? It's literally vibes. Like this is a, these are terms that they use in the market, like vibes, right? Honestly, I'll tell you one thing. You know, um, do we have vibes? you know, in the church, like, I feel like a lot of people give bad vibes, but then in Egypt, there was like, what do, what do you want? There's vibes, man. Like there's, they do drugs, alcohol, parties, orgies, adultery, many things, you name it. It's like a circus, you know, it's like a circus. It's plenty. You know what I mean? It's plenty. But it's like you want the vibes you get. You want to you want to have the vibes, the cars, the party, the everything, the bling bling you get. Now you'll not be telling your wife, the wife that you met, that she was wearing what's her neck. And just look at me now. Like this is wearing, you know, and I hear all natural, just praying. Just just praying to, you know, draw those demons from Egypt to kill them and terminate them. You are now forming, you're not forming like I said, a brother brother but then you're always telling her when you were still single in courtship ah i just want to kiss you so bad and she was like no 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 let's pray about it but then she was one controlling the situation but when ha you're now married and then you're not telling your, your wife because now she's now relaxed she's happy she has put her guard down you know she's yeah you know and then you're not like hmm, i don't know you're not putting her down i actually thought that you had you know ips like that like why can't you go get a BBL? That's how we start picking the woman apart. And then you start, you know, saying we're going to a party today, not even asking her consent. And then you start going to parties, talking about the BBL over and over again. She starts to feel, you know, her self-esteem drop and all those things. And then she starts to conform because you're the man, right? Those things. That's what happens to a man that is after money. A person that's after money is an oppressor. You will surely oppress people. If it's that what you want, if that's what you want, you surely oppress people. There is no way about it. There is no way about it. Because you are wanting vibes. If someone is saying, you are, you are asking for the person for money, and the person is like, ah, this $50, I cannot give you everything like it's i can only give you five dollars and you're like ah me me that i want two cars i want four cars give me everything that's how we start and then you're going about taking things from people take to take something that is that is the language of the devil you're coming to take steal and destroy that is what you do when you're, when you're greedy yeah when you're greedy that's how we start this type of men run away from them when you see all the signs and all these single ladies, you know, you, you'll be doing, uh, you want, you see, want the car, I want the man to have like all this. I want the man to have a house. I want to have a car. Uh, uh, uh. Guys, better, better guard your heart. Guard your heart now. 
because you will be the sacrifice. Hmm? You will be what? The sacrifice. Guard your soul. Are you listening to me? Um, you see, like I said, God even, you see, he, he, he knew that this is, he knew that I would, I could get this. <laughs> He's only linking it to wives. You see, this man, poverty mindset. You see that the ones that have poverty mindset, they want to get everything in large. They want to do everything lavish. But a man with, but Abraham, <laughs> but Abraham, that man, it's amazing. If don't if not if not for his wife, honestly, I'll tell you. I've done the analysis of you know the life of Sarah. If you are interested in this topic, hmm, go and listen to. We talked about economics. I linked economics because now I like economics. I linked that to the story of Sarah. I can't remember the 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 video, but I'll try to look for it and I'll link it. You know, we talked about if not for that, if not for Sarah, like Sarah really kind of messed Abraham's you know, reputation, you know, I shouldn't have, you know, dealt with Aga at all, not even. Do you understand? And it says here, neither shall he multiply wives to himself. This is not God's will. This is not God's will. That is hard, turn not away. Like Jacob. Okay. Jacob, ah, oh, I love the Bible, man. Omo, um, you see, the time that Jacob, um, J Jacob saw Joseph when he when jo you know Joseph, you know now now he's now like oh like ah, eh, in Egypt, but even Joseph's story too, it's like mm, Joseph was in Egypt, hmm. but like God, the analysis that I did, I I, I asked that question, you know, should. Abraham, I've gone to Egypt to get resources. Is that something that he could have done? Because I feel like Joseph's story could have changed. Like God could have shown his glory, excluding, like excluding Egypt being in the picture. Because the fact that Egypt was in the picture, even it's not, you know, it's like, mm, mm, you know, but yeah, I feel like, you know, there's always the villain and there's always the, you know, um, the protagonist and the antagonist, right? But it's like, what, whatever, it's what it is, you know? It'll make the story more interesting. Um, But yeah, it's like, what I'm saying is like when um Jacob saw Joseph and Joseph, you know, introduced him to like Pharaoh, like Jacob was really depressed. Like he was depressed, his life was depressing. Those women were killing, they were, they were doing too many, <laughs> they were doing, you know, you know, and now on top of it, Laban, his brother-in-law, Abi, yes, his brother-in-law, that guy was a, 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 a idol worshiper. That guy showed him pepper. He wasn't even done with them. He was still monitoring them. That was his father-in-law, correct? That was his father-in-law, not his brother-in-law. It was his father-in-law. Because, you know, it was Leah and... um. Leah and uh, Rachel. Leah and Rachel's um was it Rachel? Rebecca? Hmm. Anyways, <laughs> okay. Um, so like, yeah, having many wives does not pay. It says his heart will turn away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself. <laughs> silver and gold and let's now not even talk about the thing that happened to jacob jacob married many wives okay he had many wives and then they ran out of resources the famine came and fled them he said he shall not multiply himself gold This man must not, the man that you're going to marry must not multiply himself silver or gold. <laughs> like you have to, when you receive, you have to be able to pass it on. Pass the vibe. 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 
Like you always have to pass. If you're hold, holding the vibe, like you're just holding the vibe. Why are you holding the vibe for? Pass the vibe. Pass the vibe. 18 says, and it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests of, of the Levites. And it shall be with him and it shall read therein on the days of his life. Okay, your, your man should be reading the Bible and that he may learn to fear the Lord his God to keep all his words of the, all the words of the laws of the law, excuse me, guys, and the statutes to do them. You see that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren so that he cannot be prideful. Okay. So that he cannot be prideful and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Like God does not want you to get caught up in like what's happening in the world. Like just focus on God. Okay. Pass the vibe. Help, help, help. Give, give, give. Be occupied in that. It's not like I said, we shouldn't learn about what's going on. Even the Bible says we have to be wise and then, you know, this is the snakes, right? Then our enemies. But it does not mean that you should then participate in the in the shenanigans that they're doing. Okay. It's not like that. I was reading about um Jan um Provosky, who's an economist. And I like the way he writes, like it's very like it's very objective, you know, in terms of his analysis, right? Very, very objective. You get. Um, pretty much like he says, you know, he's, yeah, it he says, um, to the right or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. So ladies, hmm? look out, look out, look out, look out, look out. And God is not saying that you should go and, you know, marry someone that is broke. Like pass the vibe, you know, don't even God gives us like percentage of the thing of the amount that he wants us to like give and everything like that. Like it doesn't want you to hoard. To hoard is like to keep everything for yourself, but you still should be saving, right? As as the same way you're investing, you're giving, investing, saving and investing, right? Logic. Um, and yes, like you you're going to get, you know, when you give. But practice the year the lord's re release okay and um, which is something else that we did like study like last um last session here correct um so <clears throat> that's pretty much all for me today um yeah that's pretty much all talks about judgment and like you know kingship um so pretty much um let's just pray Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for your grace, O oh Lord, for everything that you're doing. Um, I'm so grateful. Um, the atmosphere is filled with so much love and joy and happiness and just so much promises when we obey your commandments and just stick with you and obey you and learn from our, our past an our ancestors and, and, you know, those before us. Father, we give you all the glory, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your word. Like, your commandment is amazing. And we're so lucky, we're so blessed and graced to, to, to even have it and to know your heart, oh God, and to know your mind. Thank you, Father. I glorify you, oh God. And I pray, oh Lord, in Jesus' name that, yes, like as we receive, the devil will not come and take what you've put inside of our hearts and our minds in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for we know what to prioritize, not money. We know to prioritize you and to obey your commandment. That is all we live for. Father, we glorify you to worship you, O God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We honor you, O God. We glorify you, Father. We give you all the praise. Be thou exalted, O God. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that as we come to, back tomorrow, that you will fill us up with your word, feed us with your word in the name of the Lord Jesus, that we may be fortified in our spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, Jehovah Jireh, for in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Again, um, I'm going to see you in the session tomorrow. And um, bye, guys. I...